save you and the planet in the next two weeks? How could that be done? Well, just imagine if the World Social Forum of Poor People and the World Economic Forum of Rich People could get together and endorse the time standard of money and set up a unilet system for trading across the planet. Well, that's my example of the rich helping the poor get rich too. That means that within two weeks, by the time these two fora are finishing on February 1st, we could have a resolution and a time-based banking system set up around the world. Hey, if I said Bill Gates all alone with Microsoft could have saved us 10 years ago, imagine what all the rich people and all the poor people coming together to adopt the time standard of money could do. Most people accept that when I say that if they had an election for Prime Minister of the Planet, I'd be the first guy registered. It's no joke. I would be. So, what am I promising? Well, the world's malaise, I call it the solution, global aspirin, ASA. Amnesty, security, anonymity. Now, security first. Everybody knows that I'm in favor of interest-free loans at our national banks and restricting banks' computers to a pure service charge so that they don't create a mortgage death gamble by demanding back 11 when they only printed 10. So, I'm a libertarian Socrat in the sense that I, want, I don't want cops and gambling sex or drugs or rock and roll. And I don't want any usury on loans. I'll, you know, pay with time and cash, but no dole. Once the security is offered and established, what we need is a global amnesty. You have to understand that most people have been playing under the law of the jungle. Musical chairs is a game of kill or be killed, especially when if you run out of money, you go hungry or your family goes hungry or your town or your province or your nation or your tribe or whatever. And people will do a lot of ugly things to avoid death by poverty, including stealing and beating and murdering and all the horrible corruptions of humankind who are forced to play musical chairs with money. Now, when you were small, Surely you must have played musical chairs. Did you ever stop for a moment and try and help when the music ended and try and help your little sister get on her chair? Well, no, there'd be no chair for you. Musical chairs, an elimination game, is a situation where greed pays off. Looking out for number one. Charity is a loser move. Now, let's assume for a moment that we added an extra chair so that there was equality between chairs and people. Well, now you might take a minute to help or a second to help your little sister get up on her chair because you'll still have a chair even if it ain't the biggest chair. So, adding a chair and equalizing it and getting rid of the death in the game changes everything. Well, the same thing would happen when we fix money. Once the amount of money equals the amount of debt and they're both equal, that brain effect of playing death gamble all your life that no one's ever going to help me because they've always been crooked. You know, it sounds like heaven and it can't be. Well, yeah, it can be if you add an extra chair. It can be if you equal up the debt and the money. So that after that, the only decision is let's abolish the prohibitions on victimless crime. I don't want any cops chasing gamblers who don't bother me. I don't want any ch cops chasing anybody involved in consensual sex who isn't bothering me. I don't want cops chasing anybody doing any drugs who isn't bothering me. And of course, if they like rock and roll like I do, I don't want them to be bothered there either. So those are my libertarian demands for personal freedom. And of course, I want interest-free credit at my national or international bank for my economic freedom. So, amnesty for all financially induced crime. From the lowliest torturer in a third world dictatorship to the highest loan shark and money lender in Zurich. We gotta forgive even George Bush and George Bush too. Everybody who did all these crimes for money won't ever want to do them again when everybody's got lots of money. So, the economic fear that pushes everybody to these horrors will be gone as soon as everybody's got their access to interest-free credit. So, amnesty for all financially induced crimes will be part of the global aspirin solution. Security for everybody. And anonymity. 
Let's face it, you may not be able to stay wherever you did all your horrors. You might have to move to a new neighborhood. Who knows? Too many people walking around with pieces missing because of you. You might want to move. Change your name, maybe. I mean, let's face it, how many people you know named Jerry Hitler? Well, in a hundred years, you won't meet too many people named Nathan Rothschild. You know, who's going to want to be, ugh, moneylender name, ugh, you were one of those. So anyway, that's basically global amnesty. Now, that might be why I'm still alive. You got to admit, I'm the greatest threat to the global banking power system, a slave with an engineering degree who specialized in their software, their banking software. So they've never had an enemy like me who's sworn to reprogram their system and take away their power. But the fact I'm still alive means they're probably willing to let the change happen and let us exit hell and enter heaven. Exit the hell of not enough financial chairs and enter the heaven of a balanced debt and money system. So, global aspirin is what I offer. Amnesty, security, anonymity for everybody. And that could be achieved almost overnight. Especially if we could get Unilet's resolutions coming out of the world's rich at the World Economic Forum and out of the world's poor at the World Social Forum. Now, I've already had some impact on the World Social Forum where many of their speakers make presentations every year on community currencies, local little dinky models that do so much good. And now the big ones that are happening in Latin America that nobody is hearing about, especially up in the north where they want to keep us poor. Nevertheless, unfortunately, I, just like in the marijuana field where I ran into government agents leading all of our pro-marijuana established groups, I would expect that I've seen so much sabotage in the community currency system world that the World Social Forum is loaded with bankster moles whose purpose is to make sure no one ever addresses the real cause of the problems, usury. So there are some people talking about dinky solutions, but nobody talking about the big one. And it's up to us to try and find some way to be able to influence those people to come up with those resolutions. Well, I had a really good two weeks at the poker tables, paid my nut for the month, so I'm going to spend the next two months addressing missives to movers and influential people all over the planet who could be going there, who could perhaps want to go there and do like I would do. I'm what you call a protest instructor. I go in my suit, I get clean because I got something to offer, not like the protest obstructors who just want to tear down the fences. So we have to see if we can't find movers and shakers who can bring the message of a worldwide uni let's to Davos and to Belem, to the rich and to the poor. And that is what our goal is going to be over the next while. So I've got maybe a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred different leads on people who've condemned usury. There are the anti-usury, the religious people. Well, yes, let us solve your problems. Join one. There are the monetary reformers, you know, Ron Paul, Dennis Kucinich, who want to fix money, but they're gold standard people, yellow rock standard people. They haven't seen the time standard of money, and they've all got inflation shift a in their minds and don't even know about inflation shift B. Go look for it at YouTube, my inflation shift B video to understand what we're talking about. But if these guys could be brought to focus on the answer, they're already that far away from being correct. So I have letzers, community currency people all around the planet, but many of them are led by moles. But I'm going to attempt to reach as many as I can and urge them to do something to work on getting the Unilets resolution established by both of these fora. Now, the easy way might be to ask to see if I might be able to make a video address to both the rich and the poor fora because I can't leave Canada because I got busted with the seven pounds of marijuana bringing it to the Prime Minister on Parliament Hill four years ago, so I can't travel no more. But anyway, nevertheless, we're trying to get a Unilets resolution out of these two influential fora and imagine if a world what the world might be like if the rich and the poor came together to adopt the time standard of money and obeyed Nehemiah's injunction, let the exacting of interest stop, which they did, and they went back to work, all of them. We can pull off a Nehemiah 510 move too, and that's what I'm going to try to do over the next two weeks. So, there's going to be hundreds of missives going out to movers, you know, like Michael Moore and uh, Influential people who got good hearts, but they just don't 
have the solution to the problem yet, but they're not far and their hearts are in the right place, maybe one or two movers are going to catch on and finish the job. Now, I don't have to take the ball across the goal line. I don't mind handing it off and letting someone bigger plow on over as long as I get to get the victory ring too. So anyway, let's see what happens over the next two weeks as I devote two weeks to see if we can't change the world and save our planet by getting rid of the usury that's destroying all our civilizations. The imbalance in the finance, the instability, turn a 1 over S minus I Laplace transform system into a 1 over S benign stable system. I'm Johnny Engineer with the duty to reprogram the banking system and I've been at it 30 years and let's see if we can't get these groups to finish the job and I can retire before the 30 years is up. Thank you very much.